So is your family, were they Lithuanian Jews living in South Africa? Right. So most of the Jewish population of South Africa uh, come from Lithuania. It's one, of, it's, it's one of those anomalies in diaspora communities because usually there's a, there's a mixture of if, if Jews have immigrated from Eastern Europe to London, say, or New York or Toronto, there, there's generally like uh, Jews from Poland and, and Russia and different places. But in South Africa, it was kind of interesting because a, a, a high percentage, the majority, vast majority, come, came from uh, Lithuania, uh, Kovno, Kovno province, one particular province. So uh, they came to, to, to the gold fields. Uh, South Africa was uh, the end of the world uh, up until gold was discovered there, and then it became uh, a boom, boom town. And um, there were a number of uh, figures on the gold fields who did, who did really well in the development of the gold uh, mining industry and the diamond uh, industry. And some of them were uh, Jewish and sort of were kind of an inspiration to people in, back home in these poor villages in Lithuania. And they would read about in the papers and become interested in traveling there, and some went. And once they were sort of established, they would, they would send uh, reports back that this, this is a good place. And so it just became a, 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 a major option for Jews in Lithuania. Like in, in other parts of Europe, they might have dreamed of New York or London. In, where my grandmother came from, they dreamed of South Africa as a sort of golden land, literally. And uh, so that's, what, that's, what my, that's where my people come from, from a small village in Lithuania. Her son Isaac, she has invested emotionally pretty much everything into the yeah. into him. Yeah, he's a he's he's a driven character. He's a I mean we've seen characters like him in some ways in in other immigrant stories, but there's a there's an intensity to his relationship with his mother, which uh, which uh, sort of combines with his natural. Uh, Energy, you know, he's a very he's a he's a tough kind of character, and he, um, he his mother sort of uh, she she turns him in in a way she ha she molds him into the man that he becomes, and then uh, regrets it at the end of her life, which is kind of the irony of the there's a kind of tragic irony to that that's, that arc in the story. But uh, she definitely she she pushes him. She she for 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 her he is the future, the way to, and also the way to reunite the family, uh, which uh, she wants she wants desperately to bring her sisters over. Um, in real life, my my own grandmother uh, had uh, had a, had quite a few sisters, and um, they all perished in the war and and. Uh, she was kind of like the mother figure to them because their own mother died young, so she kind of raised them. And so I, I, th I used that as part of the, char the fictional character. But it has to be said that the, this, this, grandma, this uh, mother figure is much, uh, much tougher and harsher than, uh, than my own uh, grandmother was. It's this, you know, she's kind of a scarred, scarred person, a person who's, who's been through, like, much more severe experiences than my, my grandmother had. It, it's a book about morality? Is that, uh, is that what Toronto drives it? Um, yeah, morality, it's a big word. Uh, I think all novels are ultimately moral. They must have some moral concern or, uh, or they're not serious. You know? And uh, the difference between a real novel, a, a serious novel and uh, a fun novel, let's call it that, is that the moral concerns should f are, are real. There's, there's, there's a sense that you're dealing with, you're not dealing with paragons, or with, with, with people that are perfect, that, uh, you know, like the hero who's going to save the day or, or somebody who, who just owns all of these imaginary virtues that you never really encounter in real life. You know, it's, you're dealing with real people, and so for, in that sense, it's, there's, a, there's a moral judgment being implied of these, of these people. But my own take is that, as a novelist, my job is to, is to open up 
questions and open up observations so that we think about these things. But it's not really to uh, intrude into the narrative as a, as a, as a person and say, uh, and lecture the reader. You know, it's just a, it's just a, it's about understanding why people do things as opposed to condemning them for the things that they do. And the understanding comes out of um, describing their lives and, and gradually uncovering their pasts. Because as I said before, I think everything that we, that, that people do is based on what happened to them in the past. The book is The Lion Seeker. I've been speaking with the novelist Kenneth Bonnert and Kenneth Bonnert's first time novel, The Lion Seeker, published as part of the new face of fiction by Knopf Canada.